Welcome to Sculpture Studios. It's been a little while since our last video, as we're all trying to crack on with everything that's coming through our door at the moment, but we really hope it's worth the wait, because we've got a lovely long project video for you here today, and if you guys have got a sweet tooth, oh boy, you're going to love this one. We've been contacted by Hannah and Gary, who are opening up something a little special in old Shakespeare Town, Stratford-upon-Avon, here in the UK. Just off of Sheep Street, down the road from the Shakespeare Theatre, opposite the Rose and Crown, and up a little avenue called Shreve's Walk, you're going to miraculously come across the Cookie Cottage. Short of being made out of some sort of gingerbread, the new premises for the business is going through a complete makeover from, well, whatever it was before, to transform it into the marvel that Hannah and Gary are picturing in their minds. We've been in discussions about a fantasy cookie tree, test Aiden on that one, and we've been going through sizes, trying to work out floor plans, measurements, and in such a tight space, and with no immediate access to the site, we've really got to remotely make sure we get this right. This is going to be built in our studio, and fingers crossed everything fits. Hi Aiden. so this is the shop. It's going to be a cookie bakery, and there's some space out the back as well. And we would love the tree over here, um, so obviously that's that's getting taken out. Going. This is all going. So we were thinking the tree trunk could start around here, and then the ceiling that's going to get ripped out and some beams, and we can get the branches right along there. Obviously, we'll take measurements for you and let me know your thoughts. So I'll just take the video so you can get the feel of where we are at. So as you walk down this alleyway, you'll be able to see the tree. So yeah, about there. Yeah. You okay for this? Yeah, ready. Right. Are you? Here we are. We're making a nice fantasy tree for the cookie factory. John, oh, what's it called? What? Cookie cottage. Cookie cottage. Uh, what, what kind of a tree are you making? Fantasy. Fantasy. You said it for <laughs> fantasy. Cookie cottage tree. You're no. going to get it first time. A cookie shop? Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't laugh at me. Don't ask if it's okay and laugh at me. Okay. You got it, keep uh, it. Yeah, a little fantasy uh, tree here. And we're going to be hanging loads of cookies hanging off it. And it's going to look fantastic, we hope. Or it should do. Uh... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you can't do this. It's I can't called it. a cookie cottage. What's it? As you can see, here we have started to draw out the tree on the floor. It's in the rough stages at the moment, but we've marked the window side just here. So this line here is the window where the box comes out and where it steps back. We still don't know the measurements across yet. There's a couple of measurements we're still waiting on uh, from when they can go back to their shop. Looking up at the big poly block for now, we're just roughing out kind of the rough height that we've been given. Um, so 102 comes to just two inches short here, so that should be the maximum height there. Uh, and then the box that sticks out comes to that top line there. So we know roughly how tall we need to make it. Um, so yeah, we're just getting on with sketching that out. This is very, very rough going in with the branches for the base and the top. Uh, and yeah, just marking out how big they need to be and cutting them out on the polystyrene cutting table hot wire. So, this isn't our first fantasy tree carved from polystyrene with a fiberglass blanket coat and artwork for an indoor confined space with a captive audience, however, much like every tree on the planet, every tree created here in the studio is completely unique. Everything is being carved by hand, first blocked out using hot wires, and then using nail and wire brushes. At the moment, we're starting the build by creating the tree upside down, and we do this for a few different reasons. First of all, everything is nice and accessible at ground level, we're not working up ladders and working against gravity, and we can also ensure that the canopy of the tree will sit nice and flat against the ceiling, well, because it's already sitting flat against the floor. It almost looks as though we're creating the roots of the tree first. What you can see here is us essentially recreating the measured space as best we can, so that we know our tree will definitely fit the intended space on site. In theory, anyway, there's bound to be a couple of calculations... No, no, come on, come on, have faith. We always enjoy working as a team here at the studio, as a lot of you surely know by now, but naturally that can sometimes cause a few too many chefs when it comes to design and ideas. You know what I mean?
So the way in which Hannah and Gary found us for this project was through another tree that we created for a rooftop nursery garden. They saw the project video, they loved the vibrancy of the tree colour, the little mushrooms popping out, and the overall magical faraway tree feel. They basically said, yep, love that, we would love one of those, and we were like, well sure, you got it. Considering they're basically leaving it completely up to us of how this tree's going to look, and I mean, they literally want to see it for the first time on the day when we head up there to set it up, it's a real punt that they're taking with us. I guess that's one of the good things about our project videos, that people can get a good feel for us and a good feel for the work, and that we try to do whatever we can to make it work. Now we've just got to get this spot on for them. Tree. Mystical sounds for a whimsical tree. <laughs> wheezing, bit of wheezing, it's alright. <laughs> yeah, nice Some rough, and, rough weather out there. Nice and soft through here, please, Kevin. And I mean soft, like gossamer. Smooth. Smooth. Think organic. <laughs> Talk to me, Aiden. No, Talk to me about that word. Don't do it. Okay, and there's, there's the fake ceiling. Here I am on a Sunday, Sunday afternoon, about 10 to 1 now. Um, I mean, it's nice and quiet again. I can get on with the carving, no phone calls, no distractions, no putting out fires, just me and the carving, so it's actually get a lot done today, so it's good. Once everything has been carved, we sand the entire tree down to lose that poly bead texture, before going over with our secretly sourced sticky back tinfoil. Now this is a material that's particularly popular with the comments and messages we receive, so perhaps pop us a message if you're trying to uncover the secret. The foil acts as a barrier between the polystyrene and the resin that's going on top, and we need to make sure we cover every single inch. As this is going inside, a captive audience in a small space, and a kitchen with ovens nearby in particular, we're using a Class O rated resin for fire regulations. We've got leaf foliage ordered and on the way to the studio, which is also fire rated, as well as any polystyrene which is left inside the job. Not bad for a day's work. Probably about 80-90% glass fibred. All got over with a relatively thin layer to keep everything quite light. And then Aiden's just going around all of the joining parts that are going to bolt together on site, bumping it up with a few extra layers so it's nice and strong. And over here Aiden's got a, a little bit of the pretty stuff going. Let's have a little look at this. Yeah, just really trying to decide on which mushrooms to put where. We may add a couple more. Not much room for it to go on there, is there? Oh, hey. Very good. Because he's a fun guy. There you go. <laughs> That's enough of that. Cool. I don't know if there's going to be one, two, or three. Oh, for God's sake. Well, yeah, let's stick these on. That's what the subscribers have come for, and that's what the patrons are supporting us for. There you go, folks. Enjoy. With this tree needing to be broken down for transportation, as well as the fact that the whole tree in one piece won't fit through the front door anyway, we're hollowing out the trunk and the bases of the branches. This way we can clear the way for bolt holes and fixings, and there's really only one way to get all this out, a bit of manual labour, but it's good for the muscles. Mm -hmm. 
to make sure all of the bolt fixings are drilled and installed at the correct position from the start, we're going to be chucking a man inside. I say man, let's face it, I'm not going to fit inside there, am I? So the best man for this job is the smallest member on our team, and actually one of the women of the studio, so good luck Jess. Now we all know that Jess is cooking up her own fan base here on the channel, but where's Team Sean at, huh? Shocking. That's what it is. Shocking. We're patching up any areas on the branches that we feel need a tad more strength, and we're adding some external tabs where the trunk of the tree hits the wall. This is so the tree can be securely fastened to the wall on site to save any timber moments from going on. Here it is before full gel. Just started to test some of the gel coats just to make sure they go off because we use our own wax additive with this one. You can see this one's fully gone off now. Uh, just trying to make it a bit thicker because in some places where things are patchy, where we filled them. Sometimes the gel coat comes through, or like the colour comes through the gel coat. So while well, we've got it laying down like this, we'll just finish off the sanding, hiding the gaps where it's bolted together. The gel coats of resin not only lose that fibrous texture of the glass mat, but they start the base layer for the artwork. We're going to be using car body paints for nice, strong and durable colours, and we're going to be finishing the tree in a semi-sheen lacquer. Rather than going too flat matte or too shiny gloss, the semi-sheen is a nice balance between not being too plastic looking, but it still allows you to be able to clean and wipe the tree down of any dust or dirt later on. With the tree pretty much fully constructed, we're marking out on the floor where each branch reaches out to. This way we can ensure as best we can that we're not colliding with any doors or walls. Of course, until we get to site, we won't know if any changes have been made to the layout, but that's something we'll have to tackle on the day. Now, at this point in time, we honestly don't know if the clients even know or remember what we promised to make them. A cookie-themed tree was pretty much all that was mentioned at the time, perhaps some sort of engraving of their company name somewhere on the tree, I'm not actually sure. But this is where one of those above and beyond moments take place. We're going to be setting up our own production run of baking cookies. Granted, they're going to taste absolutely horrible, but they're going to look great. Working with a lightweight foam, these are being cut to size, carved, painted, and in true cookie cottage fashion, topped with all sorts of delectable delicacies. Here, Kevin's getting started on a clay model of the Cookie Cottage logo being brought a little more into the 3D world. Oh hi there Kev. We did originally have the idea that this was going to be engraved into the bark of the tree or something to that nature, but we wanted this to really stand out. This way the clients can place this log cutout signage in more of a prime position wherever they like, but for now we're just looking forward to seeing their reaction. Modelled in clay, silicon rubber moulded with a glass fibre jacket, cast in glass fibre, and then Jess is going to do us the honours of airbrushing the colour design. The advantage of having a mould made is that should the clients open up another venue in the future, we can reproduce an identical cast. In order to create the cast, once the mould is complete, the internal master pattern needs to be removed, which as ever means the clay goes back into the bag for another job. The number of projects this clay went into, I have no idea, but there's recycling for you.
Once the resin has cured and it's been extracted from the mould, the excess fibreglass is trimmed off of the edges and then it's time for the pretty stuff. Well, will you have a look at that? The fireproof leaves have arrived here at the studio, and we're just pre-drilling a few holes into the fiberglass branches to poke the stems through when we get to location. We're not going to be adding everything here at the workshop, are you okay, Aiden? As we want to keep everything as lightweight as possible for installation. Until everything is securely in place, we don't know where any lights are going to be on the ceiling yet, and we generally don't want our leaves getting in the way if anything is already in place. Also, some of these branches are going to be transported on the top of our van, so, you know, we don't want half the leaves blowing off on the three hour journey up to location. Oh, here we are on site. Yeah, come over guys, let's get you in the shop. <laughs> Nine o'clock in the morning, just made it up to Stratford upon Avon, old Shakespeare Hello. town. Well, hang on, hang on. Did I just say Stratford upon Aden? Just made it up to Stratford upon Avon, to Stratford upon Avon. Oh my god, I did. Stratford upon Aden! <laughs> Old Shakespeare Hello. town. These are the gamblers <laughs> <laughs> taking a so punt on true. us. <laughs> so many measurements. And we wish them good luck with their venture. Oh, oh, thanks thank you so much. much. Thank you. Very, very to see it up. Well, right now we need we need all the luck we can get. So let's have a little look inside, shall we? Please let's see if that trunk fits. Because <laughs> uh... oh, oh, look at that! Look at that! We're talking less than five centimetres, I think. This wasn't supposed to be there, but now it looks like it's meant to be. Oh, look at that. Look at that. So we're going to be unwrapping all the rest of the branches, putting everything up. At the moment, everyone is in complete doubt as to whether this is going to fit. No, no. We've got support. We've got support. It will fit. It will fit. We have a plan. We have all your drawings. So we made sure it will fit. At the moment, everything looks considerably 3D while it's outside, but once it's all up, it'll make a lovely canopy. And then we'll add all the branches. Just said it's been treated to a cheeky coffee, and now we're unwrapping, all ready to go. No pressure, no pressure. So there was actually very little that we needed to change on site. We took maybe a couple of inches off of two or three branches, just to ensure that nothing was hitting a wall where it shouldn't, but basically everything went in an absolute treat. And on the subject of treats, we were certainly in the right place. This is why we are skinny guys. We always find that the biggest reward for the work isn't just getting paid for the job itself, but it's the client's reaction on the day, and seeing something materialise from just an idea or a sketch on a piece of paper, and being brought into 3D right in front of you. And this is a classic example of why we love doing what we do. This is what Kevin made. <laughs> and, and Jess. I mean, happy tears is always a welcome sight. I guess in a way, apart from the tree, it was quite good that we were vague about what we can and can't make, and all the extra touches that we'll be putting in, so at least there were a few surprises lined up for these guys on the day. That's insane, God, how clever is that? Thank you. Oh, it's <laughs> God, 
And there we have it. Two happy clients, a happy new shop, and hopefully more than a few happy taste buds. As the Cookie Cottage is now open, just off of Sheep Street in Stratford-upon-Avon, that's Avon, not Aden, maybe go and have a little explore up Shreve's Walk and find something sweet up there. We can't help but admire the imagination of Hannah and Gary for setting up their own business and commissioning something magical from us. And perhaps this isn't the last we've seen of these guys and this particular establishment, let's wait and see. We'd also like to tip our hats to Blue House Builders who helped collate everything together and even gave us a hand on the day, and to everyone that helped transform this location into the glorious goody filled gem that it's become. Please feel free to leave any comments below as they're always appreciated and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for our latest videos. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram via the links below and for all of our true die-hard fans out there you can now become a patron of our studio. All of our supporter contributions go towards the creation of these videos so if you enjoy our content you know what to do. Becoming one of our credited patrons means you'll be featured at the end of our upcoming YouTube projects like these guys here, so visit the Patreon link with this video to show your support. However big or small, it's greatly appreciated from all of us here at Sculpture Studios. Thank you very much for watching.